Humble Mug. My first introduction to Sony's bulbous little bot was via Astro's Playroom, a game that came packed in on this PlayStation 5 that I purchased secondhand through a sketchy Facebook marketplace transaction that luckily didn't result in any sort of mortal danger. This was the PlayStation 5 that came with Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which alongside a better running version of Street Fighter 6, was why I finally decided to upgrade for my PS4 after being diamond hands on it deep into 2023. Once I set up my new, absurdly large PlayStation 5, I saw this little Astro guy pop up onto my screen and I almost dismissed it because I wanted to play Spider-Man. But then I remembered just how much fun packing games have historically been for me. I thought about how Star Wars The Clone Wars blew my mind on the original Xbox, how impactful Super Mario World and Super Mario 64 were on the SNES and Nintendo 64 respectively, and I have very fond memories of Wii Sports. I still think the influence of that game is incredibly understated despite how high its sales were. Anyway, I decided to play Astro's Playroom, thankfully, and I was loving it. I think I beat the game in a single sitting. It's still one of my favorite experiences that I've ever had on my PS5. From the graphics, the music, the cuteness of its titular character, and anyone who's played it can tell you that the tactile feedback that you get with the controller in this game is nothing short of amazing. I couldn't help but think about how short this game was though, and how much I wish Sony would have just taken the gamble and made a full-length 3D platformer game featuring this new little guy. But the thing was, Astro wasn't really new new at this point. Many of you were probably introduced to him through his first game, Astro's Rescue Mission in 2018. But I didn't know this yet as I've never had a VR headset and I was already working on my Excite Truck retrospective and my Is There a Correct Way to Play Video Games video, these videos being the ones that form the beginnings of this channel. And so my humble mud brain was already developing and trying to think of ways that I could talk about Astro's Playroom. So I started scripting up this video about how playing Astro's Playroom with a DualSense controller in 2023 felt like this logical next generation step from the gameplay and controls that I remember utilizing when playing Super Mario Galaxy on the Nintendo Wii. I completed the script, but eventually scrapped it as I realized I was already three years late to the Astro's Playroom party by the time I started my channel, and I was already talking about Excite Truck, so I really didn't want to pigeonhole myself as a Nintendo Wii channel. Pun intended, since, you know, the Wii has channels. Oh, brother, this guy st But because I like that idea, and because it's still relevant to Astrobot today, a SparkNotes version of what that video comparing Astro to the Wii's Mario Galaxy would have been mostly revolves around the controls. And just think about it for a second. The Wii Remote and Nunchuck have motion controls in addition to traditional button and joystick gameplay. The Wii Remote makes noises in response to different things that you do in Wii games. The Wii Remote and Nunchuck are used in unique ways to replicate various simulations of real life actions like aiming a weapon or swinging your arms. Fast forward to the PS5. The PlayStation 5 DualSense has motion controls in addition to traditional button and joystick gameplay. It makes noises in response to different things that you do in PS5 games, and it can be used in in unique ways to replicate various simulations of real life actions like aiming a weapon or swinging your arms. I also think it's fairly easy to see from a design standpoint that many aspects of Astro, from his abilities to some of the enemies he faces to even his short stature, are quite reminiscent of Mario. So in many ways for me, this game felt like a long lost cousin to Mario Galaxy with a little dash of Mario sunshine thanks to his rocket boots. Astro's Playroom was almost like a tech demo for a next-gen iteration of a future Super Mario Galaxy game that never was, especially considering that the Nintendo Wii U was unfortunately not able to capture the magic that the Wii did with audiences. Well, I'm glad to say that I never did make that video, because now I can not only just talk about that sort of unique gaming connection quirk there with Astrobot and Mario, but I can also talk about a much bigger topic. On September 6, 2024, the wish I had put out there nearly a year prior was granted, as if handed down to us by Shinron himself, and you can feel free to thank me for that. Astrobot is back this time in a full-length 3D platforming adventure, and it's awesome. After a week of playing Astrobot myself and watching him win over the internet, I couldn't be happier. This is a whimsical game that, perhaps more than any other game I've ever seen, common consensus seems to indicate that it's particularly good at one thing. It's one that is so memorable and one that's probably gonna have you smiling from start to finish. Are created with so much exuberance that it's hard not to smile as you experience them. It's an absolutely fantastic, wonderful game that has been bringing a smile to my face. I had a big smile on my face playing this game from the beginning of the game to the end. Astrobot is a game that makes you smile, and it definitely made me smile. 
But what struck a chord with me by the time I finished the end credits of this game, in addition to all of the emotions that I felt, was what Astrobot stands for and represents in the current age of the PlayStation. During the same week that Astrobot was set to release, a game that features 160 bots who pay homage to Sony's history and back catalog, Sony's CFO said that they're quote, lacking when it comes to having those early phase intellectual properties. From what I could gather, he's saying that it's an issue that Sony hasn't nourished intellectual properties from decades ago that they can still pull from to net themselves some sales. And I think he's saying this because when you compare the Sony PlayStation brand to Disney, or an even better comparison would be to Nintendo, they are lacking. While Nintendo has characters whose origins trace back to the 80s, and Disney can go back even further than that, when you look at a lot of the games Sony is pushing nowadays, pretty much none of them are even old enough to drink. And as a consequence, these are franchises that just simply don't have the same sort of multi-generational influence, the kind where not only does your child or little brother recognize Mario, but even your mom or grandma does. Sony's big IPs right now seem to be Uncharted, The Last of Us, Horizon, most recently Helldivers, and God of War. And while God of War is the oldest IP here, it's not quite 20 years old yet. And that's a stark difference when you think about how kids everywhere saw Mario and Donkey Kong battling it out in 1981, and then were graced with a myriad of games since then featuring them that have helped cultivate a brand identity that's now significant enough to warrant sections of theme parks being dedicated to these characters. And while the various Final Fantasy, Grand Theft Auto, Crash Bandicoot, and Spyro the Dragon games are undoubtedly forever associated with the PlayStation, Sony was never successful at snatching these IPs up to develop them further in-house. And maybe they never thought it was worth doing. And when we consider the plethora of franchises Sony has helped cook up just to let bake and die in the sun later, like Resistance or Motorstorm from the PS3 era, maybe the current lack of Spyro the Dragon, for example, is actually a better reality than what we would have had had the Purple Dragon stayed under Sony's umbrella. At least we got the Reignited trilogy and Toys for Bob was able to get out of Activision's clutches. And this is a minor, minor Astrobot spoiler here, but while nothing made me happier than to see Dart from The Legend of Dragoon have a cameo in this game, and I can't stress enough how happy that made me, I was also reminded yet again that this is all I may ever get from Sony related to The Legend of Dragoon, outside of ports of the original PS1 game to whatever their next system is. While it's cool to see that people have been searching up and trying to learn more about Loco Roco or Ape Escape around the time of Astrobot's release, most likely due to that game's awesome representation of those franchises, again, it sort of begs the question, what happened to those franchises? And that question seems to only burn brighter when you think about games like Concord, which famously got shut down right before the release of Astrobot. A game that so many people worked on for so many years was shut down before my bananas even turned brown. And the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller that I was gushing about earlier quietly saw a bump in price and may perhaps be the first time ever that I can think of where a video game controller received anything other than a reduction in price during the middle of a console generation. And then to top it all off, we saw the almost unanimously disliked reveal of the PlayStation 5 Pro at a whopping $700 asking price for relatively minimal graphics and performance upgrades. Oh, and I should mention that that price goes up even more if you'd like some pretty essential things like a disk drive or a console stand so it doesn't fall over. And let's not even talk about how expensive this little bundle is in countries other than the US. In the face of this short-sightedness, of this lack of willingness to listen to fans, of this blatant anti-consumerism and lack of ability to read the room, we also received this little beacon of light in the form of one of the greatest 3D platformers of all time. A Sony property that evokes the feelings I'm sure many had growing up with Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, or even earlier with Crash or Spyro. A Sony property that wholeheartedly embraces and represents the 30-year legacy of the PlayStation brand through a lovingly handcrafted game with a painstaking attention to detail. A Sony property that has won over fans and critics alike and was for a good time there ranked number one on Metacritic. A Sony property that is a bright and colorful platformer, defiant to everything that the PlayStation brand has seemingly tried to distance itself from over the years in order to appear more, quote, adult than a certain competitor in red, and a Sony property that isn't afraid to wear said competitor's influence on its sleeves with pride, and I mean seriously, I can see the DNA of Luigi's Mansion, Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy, 
Pikmin, Star Fox, Metroid, and so many other Nintendo properties coursing through the veins of this game, not to mention all of the Nintendo Wii comparisons I made earlier, and a couple bosses that seemed like they were straight out of Mario Odyssey. And you know what? This is done so well and with such grace that it's not a negative to me. Astrobot is a Sony game that undoubtedly represents some of the best that the PlayStation 5 can hope to offer. If you were to introduce your child or younger sibling to this game, chances are you will create a core memory for them, and 10-20 years from now, they might refer to the PS5 as their favorite childhood console of all time, in a similar vein to how many of us refer to our favorite childhood consoles, how they almost felt magical. Just try to put yourself in the place of a younger person's shoes and imagine how the imagery of putting back together a literal PlayStation 5 in this game and using it as a vehicle of destruction to combat this silly yet powerful alien foe would just make fireworks pop off inside the imagination of your brain at say 8 years old. There may legitimately be a kid today, at the time you're watching this video, who tells his friend that Astrobot is his favorite video game character because they just played this game and it's all that they can think about when they're having to do boring stuff like going to the grocery store with their parents. Sony has something powerful on their hands. A game that allows us to almost view a window into an alternate reality where they did care about their legacy franchises. A game that could alter the trajectory by which they approach their IPs and their future games. But while you'll undoubtedly leave Astrobot's world with both a smile on your face and in your heart, you know that the colorful world that Astro lives in, filled with all of his friends from countless Sony titles, is his world. It's not reality. PlayStation All-Stars was never given a second chance, and not much of a first chance to begin with. And that was arguably the only other title that Sony has put out to really highlight the PlayStation legacy prior to Astro. Of course, we can vote with our wallets, and I'm hoping that, like the wish that was granted that we would one day see a full-length Astrobot game, maybe our collective wish that these legacy franchises will get their day in the sun again will happen as well because now there's so much excitement drummed up for it. But it's hard to imagine that coming into fruition sometimes when we think about all of the other decisions that Sony's making. September 6, 2024 marked a victory for Sony, thanks to the creative geniuses at Team Asobi. But now, after such a resounding, obvious victory in the wake of otherwise not-so-great decisions, the question we have to ask ourselves is, what will Sony do next? Let me know what you think Sony's next move should be and what you think their next move will be because I have a feeling that these might be two very different things. I like to imagine a future where we see Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, Sackboy, Spyro, and so many others with new games on a PlayStation console, but who knows. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.